We got seven free useful Mac apps in 2025. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So today we have a good one. We have seven free useful, useful is the key here, Mac apps that you can actually download for free right now in 2025. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go through them really quickly, one through seven. Now six of these are really quick. You can learn them in a matter of minutes. There's one that's a little bit more complex, but it's super useful. So if you're looking for some new apps here, we're gonna start with number one. I think number one is kind of the, the fan favorite, and then we're gonna keep kind of flowing through all of them. So sit back and relax, and let's get going. All right. App number one, if we look at my screen right now, you're gonna notice this beautiful desktop picture. Look how cool that thing is, right? Where did I get it from and how easy is this to change? Well, if you go down and you open up, what you wanna search for in the App Store, this one's in the App Store, it's called Unsplash Wallpapers right here. See that? Download that, that's a free download. I'm gonna click on it. Once I click on it, it puts a little icon right up here. You can see it up here. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click on this icon. Now, it gives me this little screen here. Now, it, it, there's a little button in the middle. It looks like it's a recycle button. So when I click this, it's gonna recycle. It's gonna give me a whole bunch of different choices of adding a new desktop image. So I like this one right here. All I gotta do is click Set as, Des set as Wallpaper right here. Watch what happens. I'm going to set that as wallpaper. Within two seconds, my wallpaper changed this incredible wallpaper. Now I want to actually save this for maybe later use. I can go right over here and just click download right here. See it in here? Click download. It's going to down. The little check mark comes in. That means it downloaded it to my download folder. But then again, I can keep clicking this thing and watch what happens. I mean, as I click this little middle button, it keeps moving through thousands. Of, I mean, it's got thousands of different wallpapers. And you can go through all of them like this. And then if you find one that you like, let me see if I can find one. Like, let's say I like... This one right here, just set as wallpaper again, just like that, and look what happens. Instantly, it puts it on your desktop. Again, you can download it. Now, there's not a ton of options in here. If you click over here in the settings, you can launch on system startup, update screens and desktops, update manually. Um, I like to do it manually. You could actually do it automatically if you want to have it change all the time. You can say where you want it to go download to. All this different information's in here, but realistically, I mean, there's a couple other settings in here. You guys can fool around with them. You can pick what categories you like and stuff like that. But it just sits up there, and it just is a really cool app. If you want to keep changing your desktop all the time, it pulls them. I believe they're royalty-free images because they're actually from Unsplash, which you can get images there for free. So use it to your heart's content. Really cool. Okay, app number two, it's a really quick, again, app that you can learn in two seconds. Take a look at my screen here. So I just changed my wallpaper so my face isn't so dark here. We're gonna go down. Now, the one, one thing you wanna download, now again, this is from the App Store as well. You can find this, it's called Folder Peak right here. Look at the little icon here. So click on that one. Same thing, nothing really launches here, but it goes up and it gives you these little two eyes up here. See these little eyes up in the corner? So what you can do is if you click on this thing, it's gonna give you add folder, settings, and more. There's not much you can do here, but you can add folders, which is really cool, so watch this. I'm going to click add folder right here. What it's going to do is it's going to pull up in this and I'm going to go here and select a folder I want to add. It can be any folder. So I'm going to do my like downloads folder. So I'm going to click downloads right here and then I'm going to click add. All right. So now I got this little folder right up here and I click on it and I get access to all of my downloads, including the, you know, obviously individual folders and it's got the hierarchy where you can drill down on everything. So really, really cool there as well. You can add any folder you want instantly to your up, up to your menu bar. One thing you want to notice right away is if you right click on this, nothing's going to really happen. Well, actually, if you right click on it, it opens the folder actually. It's a little bit different than what you expect. So what, if you want to get back to settings, you got to click on the icon up here, then click on downloads here. And then you can go down here and you can quit folder peak if you want it to get removed from there. You can go ahead and remove this folder. You can go ahead and add another folder. So I want to go ahead and add another folder here. So I'm going to add folder there. It's going to bring up this. Now this time I'm going to go over here and I'm going to put my applications folder in there. So I'm gonna click add. So it creates two little icons. See them up here? This one's for my actual downloads. Now this one's for my apps, just like that. And all my apps are here. But you can do this with any folder you want. It's just that simple. You can add folders, remove folders. It does a very, very simple thing. But I just wanted to show you, again, it's called Folder Peak and it's free. And you can't go wrong with something that easy. All right, this next one's a cool program. If you do, if you want to monitor your Mac system, it, it works really well. Let me just show you what I mean here. So what you want to do is you want to go to Google over here and you can type in stats for Mac, see it right there. Now you can download this a whole bunch of different ways, but from GitHub is usually the safest way for sure. And this, I've, I've researched this. This is a pretty safe thing to do for sure. So over here, you want to go over to GitHub and you click on this first one right here. And I'm going to click on this. Now it's going to actually give you some information folders in here. The easiest way that I found to download, if you scroll down, it says stats here. 
here and here's the program. And then there's a little link here to download the latest version, click here. So this is not in the App Store, just keep that in mind. You click this button right here and it's gonna download it for you, right? So once you have it downloaded and you have to install it, you're gonna have a little uh, icon here, it's called Stats right there, see it? So again, it's not in the App Store, but you have to download it. So there we go, we're gonna open this up. So what does this do? If you take a look up here instantly on my menu bar, it's going to give me key stats up here, and a lot of them. So first of all, CPU power. Now I know you can get this from Activity Monitor, but there's some key things here first of all. Let's say you want to keep monitoring something in real time, but it's you know you don't want to keep Activity Monitor open in the background because it's hard to see and hard to monitor sometimes. So this thing's really easy. It's got all the stats up here. You can see CPU's 18% RAM on this thing. I only got eight gigs on this one, it's really high already. But if I click on CPU, it gives you like all this information in here. You know, how long it's been idle, user efficiency cores, how much they're using, the performance cores, look how cool that is down here. It gives you average load, frequency, um, tells you the megahertz that you're using. Um, top processes, what you're actually using the most of the CPU with. Same with RAM, which is really cool. So you can go ahead and see, you know, how much you're actually using, just like you can in, in Activity Monitor, but it's right there in front of you. And then it gives you the top processes or applications right off the bat right here that's really cool and then SSD is the same thing you can see you know what your SSD is doing as far as processes and using it and stuff like that now if we go over here let me just click on this for a second you know you'll get actually network information in here as well you can see all your network information so even beyond this the reason this is you know obviously this is very similar to activity monitor but it's right there in your face all right but the reason I like this you know pretty much a lot you know a lot let's just put it that way is once you go into the settings here, you can actually tweak things up pretty good. So if I go in here, take a look at this. So you can go into CPU, GPU. Now we actually don't have GPU up here. You can see up here. So I want to add this. So you can notice there's a line here, and this is on the right of the line. See how this is over here on the right? I can take this and drag it over to the left of the line. And if I do that, up here it instantly adds GPU. So now I can go in here and see how my GPU is doing and the loads of the GPU obviously in here. So that's actually really cool there as well. And what else do we have in here? The thing that's really cool is the sensors one. See right here? So if I click on the sensors, you're gonna notice that there's nothing in uh, to the left of the line, like I'd mentioned. So take this sensor and click on it. It's gonna move it over here. Now if I go up here, it says sensor. So if I click on this, this is the one that I like. This actually gives you temperatures. So you can get temperatures of your display, of, of your SSD, of your other disk. I have a couple of disks connected here. It's gonna give you, you know, how much power watts you're actually using. So those are the kind of things you can't really get that easily from, you know, your Mac or from using Activity Monitor. So all that stuff's built in, but you have to go into the settings and enable some of the stuff. It's also got Bluetooth settings, network settings, clock settings. You can do a whole bunch of stuff and add it to your menu bar. And uh, and then basically, obviously, you can, once you're in the settings here, if you want to just turn it all off, you just go down here and unpower it right there. And it'll actually disable the app and it won't be there any longer using any of your resources. But it's very, very light and it works really well. This next app is probably the easiest or the simplest one of all. Let me just show you what it does. You're going to find, you can use this in one second. So what you wanna do, this is actually on the App Store. There's an app here called Hand Mirror. Hand Mirror right there, you can see it. I'm gonna click on it, it puts an icon right up here. So all this really does is you can change the size of it, but let me just click on up here, watch what happens. I click on this and there I am, right? So it gives me a picture of me. How is my camera showing me? So let's say you wanna get ready for a Zoom call, that's number one, and you wanna see what's there. Or if you actually have, my monitor's kinda of turned here, but if you had the monitor in front of you, this is actually great. If you look at me, if you see people walking behind you, let's say you're in the office or something, and you want, it's basically a mirror, so like it mirrors you, and you can see everyone behind you. So if someone wants to walk up on you, you'll actually see them do that, and that's actually really cool. It doesn't have a lot of features unless you get the kind of the pro version, which does cost money, but this one doesn't. So if you go in here, you can go ahead and just right click on this about hammer, but there's a settings in here and let's just see what the settings do. So the settings, you can just change the icon here, what the icon looks like, that's nothing big. You can also change the size of how big this thing is. So if you click on medium, for example, it takes a couple of seconds. Let's see if this thing actually loads in here. It should load in. Oh, actually I have to click on it again. I forgot. You click on it again and there it is. So you can see how big that one is. Let me click off that one. And uh, so there's a couple things you can do there. There's a couple things like extend content. So in here, um, let me just show you really quickly. So if you go, let's just go back to the small one here. We're gonna go to small, we're gonna click on this. So like, look at it. if I click on something, this thing does not go away. I can move things around, it'll go underneath it. There's a setting in there that if you don't have that selected, it'll actually disappear every time you click off of it. So you wanna make sure that's set so that the actual you know image will stay there. You can also use this for recording. Let's say you're recording your screen and you wanna have yourself in the recording, you can use this for that as well. As I mentioned before, there's this Hand Mirror Plus in here. If you click on that, it gives you a whole bunch of different options, like moving this anywhere you want and different, you know, different shapes and stuff. I believe it's $5.99. You can check that out if you want. But overall, it's called Hand Mirror. And the main thing that I'm showing you, the first one was free, and I think it's totally worth free. 
Okay, this next one's actually, if you want something that's super simple, it's probably one of the second simplest app on here, but you want a timer, but you just want a no frills timer. You don't want any ads to pop up. It just works every single time and it's free. Let's take a look. You can download this from the App Store. It's called Cooking Timer. Sometimes it's hard to find, but look for this little egg with the O3 there. If you cook, even if you type in Cooking Timer, you have to like, it's hard to find in the App Store, but for some reason it's in there. You click on it right here, and uh, here's the app right here. So it brings this up. It's really simple. You got three different timers. You click Start, it's gonna start timing you. You can click pause there and you can click reset right there. You can see that. You can start one timer right there. You can start another timer right there. You can start a third timer right there. Very easy. Again, pause it, you know, reset it. I can pause it, reset it, and then pause it, reset it. There's a couple little settings in here. Well, actually up here, this setting just changes the way it looks, which is kind of ridiculous. So all you can do is change the background, the different colors and stuff like that. I guess that's okay. And then each individual timer here is a setting, which just allows you to set like pre, you know, I guess they're pre-formatted timers. Like, what is that? Um, I don't know if that's one second or three. I guess that's one minute, three minutes. I can't tell. You get the idea. So you can go ahead and set that up and just use it. But I just use it because it just works every single time. It's the simplest one out there and there's just nothing tied to it. So if you like simple, I, you know, and you want a timer, this is the best. All right, for the next one, you actually have to download it from the internet. Let me just show you how here. And I have checked into this. You do your own research, but everyone's saying that this is a safe app. Everyone's been using this. So here it is right here. It's called Shotter. It's S-H-O-T-T-R, screen annotation app for the Mac. Really cool. So you click on this link here. It says download right here, and you can go ahead and click that, and it's going to download the app for you. And then you go ahead and install it. So let you guys know how to do that, um, just like any other app you download that way. All right. So once you have the app, you want to go down here, and here's the icon right here, S H O T T R. It's this little orange one with the S. I'm going to click on that, and as you're going to see, it comes up. You just close this out. And then over here, it's got this little S up here, and that means that you've actually successfully have the app running in the in the menu bar up there. So how do you use this? All right, now it's a screen capture app. Let me just show you something, a couple things here. So if you click on it, you're gonna see that it can capture your screen here, it can capture an area, and obviously you can do that with the Mac, you know, the keyboard and stuff like that. And then you can do scrolling captures, which is really cool. So you can click that and you can like scroll through a menu or scroll through, not a menu, but scroll through a website or something. It's gonna capture it as you're scrolling. Really cool. You can recognize text or QR. Then you can go in here, you can do a whole bunch of other things. Capture active window, capture any window, delayed screenshot up to three seconds. That's kind of cool in case you wanna just click it, you get three seconds to do something while you're doing it, get it ready, and then it takes the screenshot. So things like that, scrolling up, you get the idea. But the thing that's really cool about this is like, let's say, I mean, this is the reason I love this thing. So let's just go into a, let me just pull up an, uh, something with some text in here. Let's say you want to send something to somebody. Let's say it's more like financial records or something, but you want to remove some information from it easily. What you can do is you can go in here, click on the S. We're just going to take a screen capture right here. Capture screen like that. Instantly it captures the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and it puts it in this little window here. And this is kind of the cool thing. I'm going to open this up. So there's a screen that I captured right there. And you know, you got some things up here. Now you can annotate, meaning you, know, you can save it. Obviously you can pin stuff to it. It's obviously got, you know, text you can add to it easily. You can add rectangles, you can add backdrops. You can do all of this stuff. But the cool thing, and let me just show you a couple more. You can do paste image, spotlight, counter, oval line. All right, so you can annotate this thing. But let's just kind of, um, See if we can zoom in here. We're gonna zoom in right there. Well, the cool thing here is you can blur stuff out. So if you see this blurry erase, you can click this and I can take this and blur this. So if I just go like that, just put a box over it, it'll blur that out. So let's say I'm sending something over to a client that I don't want them to read, like a little part of it, but everything else they can read, I can go ahead and blur it here. So then if I kind of back out, you can see how it kind of blurred just that area. And even better, there's a couple other things in here. So instead of blur, you know, there's erase too. So if I click that again and I click on, well, let me just go ahead and do that one more time here just like that. So it's going to blur it. But over here, you can see it's going to say blur text, but there's erase right there. Watch what happens. If I erase it, it erases it. Or you can do erase text depending on how you want to rebuild it. But erase usually works. That means that the text is completely gone there. Then you can go ahead and save it like as a JPEG or something. As long as you save it as that format, you can't get that text back. I like blurring it out and stuff. Anyways, you get the idea. So it's a great, you know, it's a very easy way to take snapshots, um, capture your screen, all that kind of stuff up here. But Really, the annotation is really the best part of it, including blurring specific parts out. Of course, you can do this with other apps easily, right? You can do it with the Mac app and stuff, but then you got to open up multiple apps. This happens instantly. And, and to blur something out, you got to do some kind of trickery to it. Here, it's all built into it. So I like it for that reason only, but you guys can check it out. Okay, this last one here is the most powerful by far. So let's say you want like a Photoshop-like app that's free more powerful than Keynote, but you just don't want to spend the money on Photoshop. This is not the exact match, but it's really close. What you want to type in here is go to Google, type in K-R-I-T-A, Kritcha, K 
Krita. I don't know how to say that. But basically, it's right here. You'll see this little icon. You want to click download right here. And what's going to happen is it's going to bring you right here. Download Krita 5.2.9. And you can see it in here, Mac OS installer. So you just install this. It's not on the App Store. This has been out there for, I think, 25 years now. I've used it for many, many years. So I believe it is safe to your own research. So there we go. That's perfectly, you know, what you have to do to get it installed. Once it's installed, we're going to go back in here. And let me just see in here. Right here is the icon. And you want to click on this. And I'm going to show you what happens here. So we're going to click on this. It's going to take a couple seconds. Let me close this down. It's going to start loading this in. It says 25, yeah, 25 years here. You can see this. Now, here it is. Now, it doesn't look like much. Actually, let me actually open up an image for you. So I'm going to click on this. We're going to go to downloads here. I'm going to take an image that I just downloaded and we're going to say open with and we're going to just pick that application. So what's going to happen in here instantly is look at this. It opens up the, you know, the image that you have and it looks very, very familiar. Let me open the screen up so you can actually see it in here. There we go. So obviously there's an image in here, but take a look on the right hand side over here. You got a, you know, the pointer just like Photoshop. You got a text tool. You got paint brushes. You got, you know, gradients. So you got all the stuff that's really advanced, a lot more advanced than Keynote in here. And I'm not going to get into a whole bunch of different things here. But on the other side over here, for instance, if I click over here and I click this paintbrush, and then I click over here and I click on this one over here, you can see it. Let me just change the color over here to some kind of crazy green color or something. Actually, let me move this around. There we go. Pink. I can take this and I can draw any lines. Just obviously change the brush sizes and stuff like that. You get the idea in here. A little bit thinner here. See how thin that is. So you can do all these different drawing things. Here's the color, you know, palette over here. There's different layering over here. You can save it as, um, you know, tons of different kind of types of formats. It's just overall a very powerful tool. Um, I'm not going to get into like the whole thing. I just wanted to show you that it's available. So if you're looking for an application that's kind of like Photoshop, this is more for illustration purposes. It's really good. It's almost, you know, you can do vector. You can do. It's almost like an Illustrator slash Photoshop combined. I think this is a really cool program. So definitely check it out. And again, it's free. There's no cost to it. It's been free for 25 years. I don't know how they make their money. I'm sure there's a way. I just use it for more advanced things or if I want to save a file, you can shrink file sizes easily with this thing and stuff like that. So overall, check it out. I used it for a long time. Okay, so we're going to wrap this video up. I hope these things help. Just wanted to kind of rifle through a couple of them. I know it took a little bit longer than normal, but there we go. Seven of them that are free right now. Six of them are super easy to use, and the last one takes a little bit of a learning curve. But if you're familiar with those apps, it's really pretty easy. So we'll talk to you in the next one. I love making these things. I love, you know, we're going to do some more of these just as I get, I have about 30 or 50 apps that I use all the time and some ones that you've probably never seen before. So I'll do some more in the future. We'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.